Uh, well, it's been a tough Q3, but um, my I suppose it's the time where we should start thinking about what we've, or reporting on what we've done with our portfolios over the last quarter, because it's been a quiet week elsewhere, and it's the natural kind of time to be be taking stock a little bit. Not an awful lot happened in mine. I think this is the first quarter that I, since I've been, quote unquote, investing reasonably seriously, and probably before that, that I didn't actually sell any shares that I owned, which is... Um, yeah, very unusual. So Q2 for me was a large trimming down and consolidating and undiversifying, I guess. Concentrating, I suppose, is more the word. Down into the things that I had the highest conviction in for long-term holdings and so on. And this was mostly just a case of adding to them, but not in any great way because it was only dividends coming in. So I bought a little bit more in Bank of America, Citigroup, uh, and those two were both less than a 1% increase in the number of shares I own of each. Um, Kraft Heinz and Aviva added about 6% to each of those holdings for Terra, a couple of percent. And I've added in a small new purchase in primary health properties because it's nice buying things that are under a quid and owning like a hundred of them. Um, and that's roughly all she wrote for this one. So very much, uh, it feels very kind of Charlie Munger, like my, my 13F for this particular week i mean even charlie munger didn't do that it didn't even buy anything with the uh, daily journal stuff i don't know what they do with all their dividends they get because they own mostly banks and things that will be paying them three four percent a year something like that um not entirely sure what they do with all their stuff and why they're not reinvesting but it's an unenthusiastic 13f report from me uh this time out how about you so man's a pretty crappy quarter as well. Uh, I was, at the beginning of the quarter, I was about double my benchmark, which was VWRP, and now I've fallen to being about 50% ahead of it. So benchmark's at about 8, uh, and I'm at about 13, 12 or 13. So um, uh, not been a great quarter, Steve. Can't, can't celebrate that. Um, my portfolio has operated about how I expect it to. So uh, on upside days, it tends to be in between the S&P and the NASDAQ. Uh, but that often means that I get um, Nasdaq downside when it all goes wrong. So uh, I've had a few a few days of that over the quarter. Um, in terms of buy and sells, I don't think I've done an awful lot. I had a quick look through um, my trading two on two history. So I've been using CSH two for deposits all quarter. I've traded sort of in and out of that when I needed liquidity, and I've bought for Terra, Four Corners, Airtel Africa, Autodesk, Entin, Rightmove, and Adgen this quarter. Uh, I exited Netflix uh, at $433 at the beginning of the quarter. I exited Sonova flat, and I exited Spirit Cycle at £109.20 a share. And I've got new positions in Bloomsbury Publishing, Zender Group, Fortinet, Argenix, and Money Supermarket for me. So, so much for Operation Slim Down that lasted a quarter. Um, a decent quarter in terms of dividends, Steve, because I know people like to hear about dividends. Uh, 388 quid versus 358 quid in the previous quarter. However, 270 quid came in the first month of the quarter when Airtel, ISP6, DTF, Alexandria, Four Corners, Nintendo, Forterra, and Prologis all paid out within uh, within a few days of each other. So, um, pretty decent, really, Steve. I'm relatively happy with where I am at the moment. If it stays like this, uh, you know, with me beating the benchmark by 50%, I'll be very, very happy in retirement. Dividends-wise, I was also higher than I was in the previous quarter, mostly due to, in fact, my dividend was higher than, than what you described there, I think, but mostly due to a large-ish for terror, uh, dividend, which hasn't happened before and is unlikely to be repeated anytime in the near future, I think. Uh, uh, there's a dividend coming from Forterra, I think, in the next in the next couple of months, but it's, uh, or might be sooner than that, but it's not particularly, it's nowhere near the size of the last one. So I'm thinking of this as a kind of one-off lump dividend, which is fine, welcome, uh, pleased to have it, and so on, but not really part of the kind of general thesis. I also should have mentioned, since it is strictly in my ISA, but I don't think of it as part of my ISA, my realty income investment, which is currently being, well, was a bunch of premium bonds, uh, that has gone uh, pretty poorly. We'll come back to realty income in uh, about half an hour or so. But that went, yeah, not terribly well. And we had a good look at that and thought, I'm going to keep going with it for the time being. But I've continued to pick up more and more and more shares. I'm getting to the point where I'm almost adding half a share a go at a dividend, which tells you roughly how many I have. Um, Adyen, Adyen must be, is Adyen part of the reason your portfolio has done well this week, Steve? I know you said it was Europe and Europe in general has kind of 
done okay there. But Adyen took a bit of a hammering. Um, and I think it's probably well down on the quarter. But it's it had a, a little bit of a jump as, as some, I think some analyst coverage turned favourable on them. And some analysts started thinking, well, look, when you get to this price, okay, buy it. Uh, rather than overreacting to that trading update that we talked about, what, five, four weeks ago, maybe? Yeah, so, I mean, Adyen up, was up 5% just on Friday alone, so it had a fairly big jump, but uh, Bloomsbury had a decent week. It was up about 3.5% on Friday as well. VAT Group was up uh, two or three of the days and finished up 3 and a bit percent on Friday. Right Move was up 25 bit on Friday. Agenix up 2% on Friday. Forterra up just short of 2% on Friday as well. So um, I had a really positive Friday, which dragged me from, um, you know, a potential negative to to sort of meekly positive. So, um, uh, yeah, it, basically Europe Europe came through for me on Thursday and Friday. Uh, America came through for me a bit on uh, Thursday. Uh, and that ended up being a sort of roundly positive week for me. Where are you up to at the moment on ISA contributions for the year? You were, So we started out in April and we had different attitudes, right? You were running under a banner of um, don't lump it in with a view to probably failing, uh, at least in places. And I'd gone with an approach of, I don't care, I'm going lumping uh, when I see some approaches with a view to not even pretending, uh, to be honest, like I was going to spread this out. Um, I have completed my ISA uh, deposits did so a while ago, which is why there's not much action going on here because I'm not about to launch cash at something in the ISA. So um, where are you up to on that? How's the lumping going? Doing all right. I've got £13,705 in. And I've oh, got then you are sitting about... quite nicely with some time to go and some nice-looking prices. Yeah. 69%, so Steve, would you believe? What a wonderful number. Uh, and uh, I've got about 600 and about another five. So I've got about in, another 1,100 quid that I could put in this month. It probably will go in, but um, like I say, don't lump it in as turned into lump it into CSH2 and then see how mm-hmm. you go kind of thing. So, um, Interesting. That's how I'm doing at the moment. I actually am a bit short of cash at the moment, so I, I will hit the ISA um, um, uh, limit. But uh, liquidity is a little bit thin at the moment because uh, the wife has decided she needs a super king bed, Steve. So that's where that money's going. She personally? Yes, because she wants to be as far away from me as possible, evidently. I see. After Um, you. Yeah. Um, Be interesting to see how you go when you've got the uh, little one uh, for that as well. The reason being uh, sleep is the thing that ours finds uh, challenging and... One of the things we've done some of the time, he's not been very well just lately and not been enjoying life at night. Uh, but he has gone in with my wife in our bed and I've moved to the spare room uh, lately, which is absolutely fine. I would much rather do that than we all try and squeeze them together and nobody gets in sleep. But it's interesting to think about kind of, I, I will forget, by the way, uh, and I reserve the right to forget every quarter until, I don't know, at least another three years that you're no longer in Netflix. Um, I remember you telling me that was basically thesis complete. You bought it at a time when it didn't need very much to go right. And some stuff went right. Quite a bit of stuff went right, actually. But it didn't really need all that stuff to go right. So you thought, okay, where's the kind of upside uh, here at the moment? And that's... I will forget that you don't own that, though, because that's one I associate very closely with you, having um, discussed it with you quite a bit at the time when you were looking at buying it and owning it and subscriber numbers were just starting to go, oh, no, the wrong way. Uh, slightly. Hmm. Um, when I look at next it's quarter, back a long I think way, it's mostly way. just dividends for me. Hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Netflix has come back a long way, Steve. So from, from I saw a 432.92, and just looking at it now, it, it's gone back down to 37.753. So it's a, it's a healthier kind of range for a buy. And I'm not particularly interested in this region, but um, it, it is a, a better region than 433 for buying than... than uh, uh, well, that's yeah, so and it's to, uh, probably a bit more profitable than it was, so you're probably getting more coming back the other way in terms of cash. Uh, and it's less competition now as well. I know people think that the, the the amount of competition has has probably increased, but the actual strength of the competition has decreased. Um, I think we're seeing Disney Plus, Discovery, HBO. All of those kind of services now, um, where everybody said, though, well, they're just going to come and beat Netflix up. Uh, the strength of competition has really diminished. And, and actually, the, out of all of those companies, people would have said to you, well, Paul said quite regularly that Netflix is the weakest of a lot of them. It's actually turned out the opposite way around, and where Netflix is, is probably the best at generating content, generates content that the vast majority of people like, 
and has actually beaten up all of the surrounding uh, all of the surrounding companies. So Netflix has been very very impressive, but at four thirty, it's a different kind of story to at two hundred. It's a real motley fool winner that one, isn't it? But you know that's one of the ones where they kind of called this a long, long time ago and have been on it for a while. And 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 hats off to them, right? Uh, it seems to me like recently they've picked a lot of losers, and people will, I think, with some justification, point to the fact that their style has had a pretty strong tailwind behind it for the last however long. They will point out in return that that's not an accident. Uh, that's kind of there was a deliberate tailwind there that they were looking to exploit for share prices and they were telling you the best way of going about doing it and and and, and most of the time they've been correct tide turning a little bit here so now all of a sudden i imagine their stuff is less popular but yeah netflix is a real uh a real motley fool winner um you're anticipating to move steadily through q4 then uh steven not go not go too crazy with anything just yet it depends what happens, doesn't it? It mm-hmm. all depends on, on, on what's going to happen. So we we think um, Baby will likely be here the last week in November, so um, probably not going to do an awful lot in December. Um, but I, I probably will have about six weeks off after the baby uh, is born because it'll fall into holiday yep. time, um, paternity time, and then we have a, a, a Christmas shutdown at work. So... Um, so so yeah, I should have six weeks off. So I'm, I may have things to do. I may not have things to do. Um, I, I'll guess I'll see. But it might be one of those quarters where you do quite a lot at the beginning of it and not a lot at the end. I'm not entirely sure. No, it'll be interesting to see how this one develops. I'm I'm looking forward to Q4. Actually, it feels like somehow a weirdly fresh start from uh, at the end of Q3, even though it's completely not, and I'm not expecting it to be particularly dramatic in my own um stuff 